How important is creative destruction to entrepreneurs? Creative destruction as a phrase was, I think, invented by a, an Austrian economist called Joseph Schumpeter, and it refers to the fact that each successive generation of entrepreneurs um, essentially reassembles the elements of the previous generation's uh, business empires. So what happens is that, that in order for new companies, new enterprises to form, the old ones have to essentially be uh, disassembled. And I think this element of constantly reorganizing the assets of society in order to make them more productive is an essential element in the whole way in which the business cycle turns. It permits fresh blood and new ideas to enter into the arena. It permits the uh, generation of new inventions and material progress, which um, has, I think, been responsible essentially for the success of capitalism and the advancement of human society for how many hundreds of years. What steps would you advise government to avoid taking if it wants to encourage entrepreneurship? Well, as President Reagan once said, I think the most important single thing that government can do to encourage enterprise and entrepreneurs is to get out of the way. What I mean by that is government should not create additional taxation or bureaucracy or regulation that discourages people from setting up their own businesses and hiring new staff and creating wealth and new enterprises. So it's all about allowing free markets to flourish and entrepreneurs giving them the freedom and the independence to follow their own dreams and thereby initiate new undertakings. Aside from just getting out of the way, what can government do to help entrepreneurs? Well, I think actually the first thing they could do, which is my particular focus these days when asked this question, is to dismantle some of the oppressive legislation surrounding employment. Because I think particularly for smaller companies, those, for example, say, employing fewer than 100 people, the idea that they can have a full-blown human resources department and be totally on top of all the latest rules is a bit far-fetched. And the truth is that if you talk to entrepreneurs, virtually all of them now have had the experience of a nightmare employment tribunal. And I noticed that uh, in the year, I think, to April, the numbers of employment tribunals in this country has risen very sharply, something like 35%. Now, clearly, that's partly because I think of higher levels of redundancies, but also I think it's because more and more people realise that this is rather a good wheeze. They can get uh, a lawyer on a, a, a no-win, uh, no-fee basis, and they can essentially put pressure on the employer to settle to avoid, avoid wasted time, the risk of losing, uh, you know, bad publicity, and so forth. And the truth of the matter is that I think if government wants to encourage employment, encourage new enterprises, and help cure the curse of unemployment, then it needs to make it easier, less risky, for the private sector to take people on and create jobs. And that means making employment legislation less oppressive.